How's it going everyone? Today we're back with another review of Broken Blade playing Galio top at Worlds. Now on this Worlds patch, Rumble is probably the strongest top laner on the entire patch, so Broken Blade cooked up a creative counter pick and he was able to not only dominate the lane, but able to outperform him in teamfights as well, so we're going to be breaking down how exactly he did so. So first of all, if you're curious about his runes, we can see here he's got Aftershock with Shield Bash, Second Wind, and Overgrowth. And if you're somebody that's planning to play first time Galio top and ranked, it's going to be a little bit stronger now because the Shield Bash buff on this recent patch is going to make it even more powerful in the early lane especially. And for his secondary runes, we've got Cookies and Cosmic. So I'd stay away from Cookies on the new patch as it doesn't give mana. You'll most likely need Mana Flow Band or Presence of Mind. But we can see, starting E level 1 and walking with the wave, E start is a lot stronger than Q, as E auto gives you that bonus passive damage, where Q and walking away is just not going to have that same effect. But Rumble, he either respects Galio's level 1 damage, or he's probably never versed it before, and he doesn't know what to expect, so he's just playing relatively safe. Either way, he's able to secure push in this matchup. So he's holding on to E, waiting for Rumble to step out of position. Before he commits it, nothing worse than eating into his face and missing. So he's waiting for Rumble to walk up, but Rumble refuses to go for a minion. And then here, he thought he was out of position, went for an E, but Breeve was able to bait him with his body language. So really nice by Rumble here. But it doesn't really matter that much, as Broken Blade was still able to secure Pryo in this matchup. Now, one of the potential downsides of Galio is the fact that your passive is pretty uncontrollable, so you are going to push faster than you'd normally like to. But to remedy this, Broken Blade opted for a two wave crash, and he pushed it really quickly. If Rumble tried to block their casters here, the third wave is so far away, he would take way too much damage, so it was a good amount of wave control, I would say, from Broken Blade to not let Breathe get that freeze, and then he goes toward the enemy golems just to give his bot lane a bit more info and make some use of his prior. So we'll go back here, we don't want to miss all the action. This is where the first major trait of the lane comes in. And we'll see here. So first of all, he walks up, tries to min-max his passive. So hits passive on the wave, the AoE hits Breathe here, and then he goes for a Q, then he goes for an E. So every spell you hit your passive cooldown will get reset, and then we can see he gets a second punch onto the Rumble as well. So he's able to get such a strong trade already at such an early point in the game. So Rumble was pretty much full HP before this point, but passive into QE auto was able to chunk him down quite nicely. He went back for a Aftershock hit as well, but he was just out of range. But good try by him. And then now, he just took level 3. He's got all of his abilities. He goes for another passive proc onto the caster to AoE and hit Rumble. So every time he's got passive, he's going for that proc. And now Rumble just steps up to retrade. Cops a W. And then he is able to pick up a nice solo kill here. You can see so much damage. But one thing I really liked, well, two things I really liked about the solo kill is, first of all, he did get W level 3 while his two spells were on cooldown, so he waited momentarily for them to be up, but he didn't literally stand here and wait for Q, E, and W to be up, because by then Rumble would have respected, so he started his W now, went for the trade, because he knows during the CC his Q and his E will come back up, so CC is still here, he gets an auto Q, and then here with his E, instead of jumping back here and letting Rumble flash it very easily, he is backwards, Rumble thought he was out of the hitbox, but he was just in range, and he's able to pick up a nice clean solo kill, so I'd say really impressive use, of Galio passive constantly in this lane and really good use of his abilities as well but I also like that he changed up the wave control that you'd normally do as a top laner in the cyber matchup because he's playing a champion that pushes a bit fast he went for a really fast really clean two wave crash so that he still had room with the wave bouncing back to actually trade onto this rumble so now from this point in the game, I will say it did get quite boring in lane. The team fights is where it really started to pick up, and we'll be reviewing those shortly. But I just want to walk through his mindset in this lane. Now, you can't really freeze and punish the Rumble anymore. As with Kalio Passive, it just completely nukes the wave. So it's going to be hard to grow this lead. Rumble can just sit back and chuck harpoons, and Galio will eventually break the wave. We can see every time his passive's up, it's just doing so much extra damage. So it is going to be hard for him to grow his lead anymore. Instead, he decides to permanently push the Rumble under tower and look for creative plays around the map, but because the mid matchup Ori vs Tristana, Tristana extremely safe, there wasn't really many options for him in the early game. But there was one cool thing I saw in the lane from this point where here we can see the passive just completely nuked the wave. And if Rumble disrespects like this, he will of course force a trade W auto QE, really nice comboing by him. But you can see all the spells or the passives that he uses just completely breaks the wave. So he bases here and he TPs back. So he's TPing back, he's leveraging his TP to gain an advantage over Rumble. He came back to get an item advantage, and while Rumble's half HP, he wants to be trying to pressure him as much as he can, because he wants Rumble to base and lose out on a lot, as Rumble doesn't have TP. 
but because Rumble can just sit back and wait for Galio passive to do the work for him, he was able to not really miss that much. So we can see trying to queue him whenever he can, trying to poke him under tower, but Rumble with his W, he can just block a lot of that poke, and it's really hard for Broken Blade here to grow his lead anymore. He probably could have gone for a bit more tower sh auto attacks, I would say. Maybe it's respecting jungle, but the main problem is he's just permanent. The main point is he's just permanently pushing, trying to keep Rumble stuck here and allow Ryke to play for these void grubs. But Rumble just ulties the wave and bases straight away. So he's able to not really miss out on that much as his ulti one shot the wave really quickly. And it was the wave before cannon. So even if Broken Blade caught the wave higher and pushed it really quickly, Rumble would make it back in time and probably just miss one melee creep. So I'd say great timing for Rumble to base the one wave before cannon, the 630 normal wave waiting for the seven minute cannon wave so that he barely even missed one melee creep. So Broken Blade got a plate on that timer, but you can see, even with that kill, hard to grow your advantage. So it's mainly important for a Broken Blade to maintain prior and constantly look for plays and stop the enemy team from being able to be proactive as well. Now, from this point in the game, I'm only going to skip to the major events, the team fighting in the macro. If you're curious about the lane, it's pretty much just a farm fest pushing waves under tower, but he does have quite good CS, almost 10 per minute. And if you're curious about his build, he's got Hollow Radiance into Merc Treads, and then he was building into a Rift Maker right after. So we can see bases for his haunting guys here comes onto the map. He wants to be playing for this third dragon. So goes bottom here because he didn't want to be top and be too far away from the action. He'd be a bit just out of ulti range. So he just goes bottom, catches the wave. And what I really liked here as he's setting conditions for his ulti. He's waiting, if the enemy Maokai or Leona goes in, or if my Rattle or Nocturne find an angle, I'm going to go in. So we can see, if you're watching here, they go on to Rel. He's not ulting now, he's waiting the second Leona hits E, then he flies in with Galio LT. So really good condition setting. This is something that can apply if you play champions with globals like Shen, or if you play any champion with TP, which you should be. So setting a condition for your TP or your global spell to make sure the enemy is actually overcommitted is going to be really important for you. So we can see he flies in here, pops W onto the Maokai, punches them up. He did make a few mistakes in this team fighting. I would say, well, I'll break it down at the end. He punches Maokai up here quite a lot, but he just doesn't really have the damage. He's still a full tank champion, even with haunting guys, but then he kind of redeems himself here. Goes for the hero flash three-man W, and a little bit greedy here. Goes for the Q on to Rumble. I'm guessing he was trying to hit Rumble with the E back, the kind of kickback here. It was just out of range, so Rumble's able to just live, or he was beating, being greedy for Jin either way. A little bit unlucky, and then here's my favorite part of the whole game. If you want to live 80 carry you gotta get good at dodging like me and he just lets Han Sama die but Han Sama should have been dodging that to be fair but a good mechanics by him. So going back here, I'll say the main thing I really like about this team fight was the condition sitting here. That's number one. The flash three man W was great as well. He didn't rush into his flash. The issues I have is here he rushed into Ying straight away when Leona was already dead and then here he tried to kill the Maokai by himself as a low damage tank champion where he should just be playing with Callista and uh, Oriana here, trying to facilitate them, trying to block this Rumble from approaching here by clicking over him, but he goes on to the Maokai instead. If he eat onto the Rumble, the fight would be a lot better for his team, but he just gets a little bit greedy here, maybe tunneling on those double buffs. So this is kind of the issue and a big reason you don't see many players cook up creative counterpicks that often. You're never really going to be as good at them as you would be on a champ like Jax or Renekton that you've played thousands of times in solo queue and scrims because they've been meta so often. He's still playing well in this game, don't get me wrong, he's still f super impactful, but you can see the little details are just off where he didn't really fully understand his role in this team fight and it made it a lot harder for his backline to play, but I would say the ulti usage was really good, setting the condition waiting for Leona to actually overextend, and of course snowballing from lane definitely makes this counterpick worth it so far. So skipping to the next major event, we are going to take the spotlight off Broken Blade for a little bit, as I was really impressed by Weibo's decision making in this upcoming Baron play. So we can see it. Both teams really want Baron, but Third Dragon is also spawning in 30 seconds. So the way Weibo read G2 was really impressive to me. So I'll put it on Red Team's vision for now. Weibo's vision, we can see G2 is constantly pushing mid. They want to play for Dragon or Baron. But the problem is if you fully commit to Dragon and get Vision down, the enemy team will get full control of Baron, which is what they don't want. They don't want to be walking into their Fog of War, into Rumble Maokai. It'll be really hard for them to play out the Baron fight that way. So instead, they try to send Han Sama to solo Dragon as a creative play. So we lost Vision of him here. They have no idea what GTO is doing specifically. But in my opinion, the way they guessed that Han Sama went for a Dragon solo here was actually the way he used his W. So they see the little come shot thing here, the W, sneak into the bush. It's kind of a Callista habit that they they drop W and walk off. 
So they just made a guess, and they did get a little bit of vision of the other three members, but they don't know for certain. Callista's not just hovering here and dodging the E. Callista definitely could be with them, but they made a guess based on the body language and the way she used her W. So Crisp saw that angle to go for a really fast-paced engage here and just committed E flash onto Yike and just start the fight because they knew Callista, well, they were very certain Callista was on Dragon. They were willing to take that risk. So great engage by them. They're able to win the fight 5v3 pretty much and pick up the Baron as well. So it was looking pretty tough from this point, but G2 was able to uh, crawl their way back into it. So the pace of the game starts to speed up now. We're going to be skipping it to the next major fight. And if you're curious about the build, we can see going for a Zonya's item third, just to create as much space and time in the team fight as he can. So here, Mickey X saw Breeve was slightly out of position and forced onto him with Flash, burning the Seeker's arm guard and Flash. Now this comes into play later on, where now they know, out of all the everyone on the enemy team, Rumble definitely has no Flash. They probably knew Leona and Malkai didn't have it too, but they are very low prior targets. They're full tank with these really supportive items, so not really somebody you want to be full committed on but rumble is a different story so they see here i'll put it on their vision he pops ulti and goes on to rumble straight away really good combo with the oriana invisible ball there and to galio as well able to one shot the rumble pretty quickly and now uh, so breaking blade from this point still got all of, all of his spells up flash w's onto the backline gets a taunt onto 280 carries e straight away gets the punch onto Jin, pops on his here so it doesn't take too much damage and buying time for his next rotation of spells Clicks backwards here, kites out the Tristana, doesn't want to give her the bomb here, and then waits for it to almost pop. Goes back in with E, and able to get a knockup onto Malka as well. So you can see how impactful this champion can be when he's playing with his teammates, and they're able to take advantage of the high amounts of CC and space that he can create in these fights. So now, rotating down, this is where uh, what I talked about before comes into play as well. You're never going to have the same mastery as you do on your main champs. Perfectly okay, but he mistimes his W on this TP, so he's not able to perfectly chain CC the Tristana out of TP, and she was able to pick up a kill onto Caps here. So just the little details could be a bit better on this Galio, but I would say still super impactful. You can't really complain about a target selection problem or a mistimed W, because he is just completely carrying these fights. Now from this point in the game, the next objective is third dragon, so both teams should be playing for it because Broken Blade assumed that the enemy team would play for it. He felt a little bit confident to just push and top and rotate, but they were able to be quite creative and get a nice pick onto him. But he, it's not really the end of the world, his team was able to get the dragon for it and they didn't lose a major objective. I'd say it's still a mistake because they're in a position to win a team fight, so it's better that they don't have to trade, but not the end of the world. So you can see, he bounces back though, even though he got caught, the second he respawns, we'll see very shortly, looking for a creative play. So instantly TP's in looking to get involved in what's happening here his team is killing Maokai and he was able to block the enemy Jin from approaching he knows Jin has no flash so he calls in Nocturne as well and they're able to make it really hard for Jin to play this fight they don't get the kill Gallo is pretty low damage but they're able to chunk him to one and make it so Jin was unable to participate in this fight whatsoever and that on top of the Maokai being dead they're able to pick up the Baron for themselves so really good comeback from getting caught out and if you're curious about his build from this point he's got Randuins and then he's building into a Zonyas because they're only damage. He's not going to take any damage from AP. His only real damage threat is the 280 carry, so Randrons is a great buy. So here, yeah, comes onto the map. They're looking to use Baron now to close out the game. Clears the wave. Just the reason it's better for Galio to be mid here and his team bottom. Not only does he have ulti, so if any type of fight happens, he can join them, but it's really easy. For your team to get flanked if they're pushing mid because there are so many entrances the enemy team can flank from or tp wards they can sneak but if they're all bottom and they're leaning here there's only really one way so if they have a ward over this wall you can't really get flanked if your whole team is bottom and even if they do gallo can instantly ult and he's also pretty hard to kill mid they probably could look for it, but he does have flash, he is really tanky with Zonyas, he could buy a lot of time for his team to catch up to him, so I like the vision control here, they've got this side of the jungle completely controlled, and if a fight happens he can ulti in. So we'll see what they do here, just seating the inhib, instantly switch to mid after they get that inhib, so I like they're not wasting any time with the Baron, and even here, Broken Blade, he's pressuring really hard, he commits W to zone out Maokai, doesn't commit his E, of course we don't want to dive here, he's just zoning them out, so that he can't really follow up the Rumble ulti, and they're just slowly chipping away at this tower with Broken Blade defending, so everything looks good. P Pops W as well, you can see he's not really that willing to E forward, as I say that, he's, he's on cooldown, he's not that willing to E forward, unless his team is in a position where they can follow him up. He's mainly just trying to catch people out with W. Burns Leona's flash sim, but we can see really hard to kill. Still has Zonius this whole time, so no th real threat. Went a little bit too far forward there and lost his flash, but not the end of the world. We're, we're able to pick up two inhibs. 
So good disengage by Caps. They're all trying to disengage him. Chucks the Q back, picks up the kill with the help of Caps. So I'd say really nice disengage. A little bit too crazy. Galileo Flash is pretty important. So he didn't need to go that far forward, but he was able to burn the owner Flash and get away anyway. So not much to complain about. So you can see. The Baron Mecha we talk about a lot have what your teammates inside and one side of the jungle controlled, but now that both inhibs are gone, they completely switch sides. So now he trusts his super creep to do his job, it can push him in for him, so his team is going to control this jungle here and just stop it so that the enemy team can't flank from this position. So I'd say really well use of Baron from G2 here, and they're just slowly trying to shift down this tower. The enemy team has to engage. If they don't go now, they cre they're going to have to answer the super creep, so they're really pressured to go in. If we don't engage now, the bot and the mid wave will come here, we'll have to answer it, and then they'll break the end up anyway. They have to engage now before it's too late. So they jump, dump Leona ulti, rumble ulti, everything, and then we can see how the fight plays out. Tarzan did get a nice creative approach here. And a, a high impact ulti. But Mickey X got a good engage follow up with the Galio. Big three man ulti. And then kiting back to his team. So it looks like he learned from his mistakes. Probably he realized from this fight. Or his team communicated it. You need to play with us. Or he probably said it too. So he's able to just play with his team in these fights. And they, the damage dealers were able to get their job done quite nicely. So I'd say... In terms of how good this pick was in, in solo queue, you can pick it into counter matchups and two AP champions. It wouldn't be as good into AP range picks as you won't be able to utilize your E that well. But AP champions like Rumble, you are going to have a lot of success in neutralizing them and being impactful in team fights. But in terms of this game, I think it was a great pick, really good with their team comp. Definitely something they planned heading into it because they put the picks facilitated the Galio, and in this meta where Rumble is broken, of course we can predict that the enemy team's going to pick it, so I'd say really nice cooking from them. You can see how impactful this champion can be, how much has the Rift Maker given us, we can't check the healing, unfortunate, but still really impactful overall. So they end the game here, I'll just skip it a little bit, and I would say quite a good game from him overall. Alright everyone, that's it for now. I'm excited to be back in action with the world's content. Hopefully we get some more banger matchups and exciting picks. If there's any other game you'd like to see me review, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. But if not, I'll see you all next time.